Hello everybody, welcome to Let's Make Art. We like to paint watercolors every single week and we do a different one and it's pretty awesome. This week we are doing <laughs> fall leaves. Yeah, you have to make noise, Brock. They can't see you doing a thumbs up. <laughs> did, did I wear this shirt to kind of match with it? Yes, yes I did. Doesn't this shirt feel fall leafy? It feels very Thanksgiving. Okay, that's close, that's, that's fall. close, fall. Okay, great. <clears throat> we have five colors going on for this project. We have black, we have emerald green, we have tangerine, we have red, and we have dandelion yellow. So that's five. Brushes are round six and round two. And you might be like, where do I get these fantastic paints and brushes? Well, you can get them at our website, letsmakeart.com. Not only do we do tutorials and all that stuff, but we also sell supplies just to make it easy for you guys. And we also have a subscription box that um, this kit comes in every single month if you decide that you wanna paint. If you do more than two kits in the month, then it's definitely worth it. So check that out. You can find that on our website. How much does that kit cost, the uh, monthly subscription? Subscription is 35 and a month. For four. What a bargain. Kits. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now we are going to talk about leaves. Now, there are going to, there's three steps to these leaves, but what you have to understand is that the second step is very long and has many steps within those steps, okay? So first step is we are going to draw the stems on the leaves, and then the second step, two, 2A, two we're gonna put water down, okay? 2B, we're gonna put color in it, to see, we're gonna put some salt. Step three, after it dries, we're gonna put in our little um, veins, or I called them mini stems earlier, and Brock was like, what is that? I'm like, oh, the, the veins. You guys know what I'm talking about. It sounds so easy, only three steps. <laughs> Just three steps with three sub steps. You're fine. Okay, so uh, let's get started. I'm gonna start off with my uh, round two to do my stems. Now. When you do your stem, you're gonna do your main stem that the leaf comes off of, and then you are going to do uh, five stems off of that, and those are gonna be like the main sections on the leaf, okay? And so I'm gonna do like a brown color, so I'm gonna mix a little bit of tangerine and black, and I get this brown color, okay? And what you have to keep in mind too is um, you just kind of want to like mentally place it um, before you lay it down because if I start to put my stem like this way and I go here, then my leaf can only be this tall, right? Because I'm going to run into the other side of the paper. So I'm going to have it kind of, I'm going to start in the middle and have it kind of angled up to the right. So I'm going to put in my stem. and black and orange because that brown was just I don't know a little too plain for me you know okay so here is my main stem and then I'm going to do five stems off of that and um, we're going to start I'm going to start with like my my long middle one and this is going to tell me how tall my leaf is going to be okay so here's the the stem itself and then how tall my leaf is gonna be. I'll make it like that tall. That's pretty tall. And it can go, I have kind of like, a, it's not perfectly straight, it kind of has a curve. Um, you can make yours perfectly straight. It's your leaf. There are so many leaves out there that you literally can't make the shape of this wrong, okay? Because there is a leaf out there that looks like that. Okay, and then we're gonna do the uh, stems off of that. So here's one. The mini stems? The, the, they're not like mini stems. They're like backup, like side stems. They're like coming off the leaf. This is like our bone structure that we're putting down. <laughs> our skeleton, if you will, right? So I have five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now I'm not gonna put in my other leaf yet. I'm just gonna focus on this leaf. 
And that is because I want to, this is gonna like fill out more and then that will tell me like where the other leaf is gonna go. Cause this one I can tell is already a little bit bigger than my example. So I'll have to like, you know, change that as I go for the second one, make that one smaller. It's okay if your leaves aren't the same size. It's okay if your leaves aren't the same size. Not all leaves are the same size. Not all leaves are the same size. They're all different colors. They're all different. It's your painting. It's your painting. It's your life. Do what you want. Okay, so that was step one. Now we're moving on to the first step, the first part of step two, which is the water. Now what I like to do for these is I kind of do it section by section. So like this is going to be a section, this is gonna be a section. You guys, you understand sections. Okay, and then when you do the sections, think of like that kind of ocean wave that you do when you're little where it has like that point at the top and then it goes back down. It's gonna be similar like that, that motion. So I'm gonna start with water and here's where my leaf kind of meets the stem here. And then I'm gonna start doing my ocean wave. There's no color, just water. No color, just water. Just, and you wanna, you're gonna do the ocean wave and I'm only doing like this section of it and then I'm gonna fill it in with water And I'm, I'm gonna kind of avoid that initial color that I laid down because I don't want it to bleed. And then you're gonna start adding color. Now, it is totally up to you. I mean, all of these are going to be different and change depending on how much color we're adding where. So don't stress about it. It's okay to make it your own. But I'm gonna start with maybe a little bit of orange. And I'm just gonna drop it in. Now a lot of this is just dropping in color and just letting it bleed, okay? And then I'm gonna put in some green. Just kind of let that move. So you need to have a lot of water down. So you need to have, I mean, you don't want it to be puddled on your paper. If it's puddled on your paper and you try and put paint in it, it's not gonna spread. It's just gonna stay there but uh, you want enough water to where the paint will move across. So it just needs to be wet. A medium amount. A medium amount of water, if that's at all helpful. Just the perfect amount. <laughs> the perfect balance of water, please. And then um, I'm gonna drop in some yellow on this side. Now the other thing to remember with this project, because we are using so many colors and we're going back and forth, um, rinse your paintbrush in between doing that and then also when you drop in colors you can kind of mess with them a little but you don't want to run your paintbrush back and forth across all of these colors because then um, they will turn to mud right so you can like blend them a little bit so right here I'm just gonna like kind of move some stuff but for the most part I'm not you know working back and forth like crazy but this is where um, you can just like, this is the best part of watercolor I feel, is just like dropping in a little burst of color here, maybe a little there, and just letting it hang out and not, not messing with it too much. And you can always add color a little bit later. If it's not spreading, you can just rehydrate the area Now the reason why we, we lay the water down first is sometimes we can get really fuzzy edges with this paint, but I learned that if you put water down first and then drop color into it, you're gonna get a nice clean line. If I try to just take paint and draw it, then I'm gonna get a little bit of a fuzz on the border of my leaf and I don't want that, so that is why. And then you can always like adjust because I like my tips to be nice and sharp. Okay. Are you adjusting with water or is there color on your brush? Um, there's a little bit of color on my brush, but either would work. Now, <clears throat> that, was the, that was the second part of step two was putting in the color. And then you can put in salt if you want. Now for me, with salt, and you can kind of see the effects that it has right here, is basically it just pushes out Wherever the salt is, it's, it pushes out that color um, wherever you place that salt. 
and and then where the salt is itself the color stays so you get kind of like these like weird dots and stuff which are super cool and i love the texture but i only did salt in some of the places i didn't do salt in every single area now if you want to do salt in every single area go right ahead. This is where you would do it. You would want to do it while it's wet and then you are not going to see these cool effects until it is dry. So you kind of just have to like trust it. Like you just like sprinkle it and then move on and then just see what it looks like after. But I'm not going to do that yet because I want to do it over here more instead. So we're going to just keep on repeating that process all the way across our leaf. So I'm going to do my kind of ocean waves so in between these like um here i'll move this here so you can see in between these bones that we have for our leaves they kind of all go in so this goes in and then goes back out this goes in and it goes back out so just keep that in mind when you're drying um, with your water that you're going to want to bring that curve back in and then it goes back out do your little ocean wave And you can always, like I just did my ocean wave thing and I was like, eh, I don't like the shape I just did there. So I just adjusted it. It's just water. Now I'm starting to get a little bit of color on my water because there's paint in there, but that's fine since we're gonna cover it up anyway. If that bothers you though, you can just keep a, a clean glass next to you and use one brush for rinsing and then another brush for grabbing water. Okay. And then we do the same thing. We're gonna just drop in some color. Let that just kind of move across. And are you trying to put similar colors um, near each other for continuity or does that matter? The colors next to each other don't have to be totally similar because the leaf, if you look at the leaf and how it changes, uh, you just, all of these colors are actually pretty similar together. Orange is similar to red. Red is similar to brown, which is what we mix with the black. Yellow is similar to orange, and green is similar to yellow. So it's not, I guess the only thing to be totally careful of is try not to do red and green right next to each other, but even then, that's fine. Because I have a, You don't have to match though. Yeah, no, they don't have to match at all. Ruby. Sorry, I'm like, going way into your <laughs> box like it was just a simple question i was giving you an easy one <laughs> okay and then another thing that you can do um, is you can drop in like color let that spread out and then you can drop in water on top of that look at that cool texture do you see that that is beautiful isn't that cool this so is why we do watercolor. this is why we do watercolor you guys right here in front of our faces so have fun with that drop in color and then drop in water again but just be careful not to go too crazy with the dropping in water because um, if there's too much water on your paper it's going to start to bend and warp and uh, your this paper can only take so much water so i think i'm painting on the wrong side of my paper Okay, time out. <laughs> There's a right side and a wrong side. Okay, yes. Oh my gosh. So watercolor paper has a really textured side, at least um, cold press watercolor paper does. And that's the side you wanna paint on is the side that's really textured. And then this Canton paper has a slightly smoother side that is the back. Um, I'm just gonna keep painting on it because on this paper, it's not a huge difference. But if you're painting at home, just keep that in mind. There is a front side of a watercolor paper and it's just a little bit more um, textured. Wow. Yeah, you learn something new every day. Okay. I wanted to make some brown. There we go. Normally you make brown by mixing complementary colors. That's right. But now you're just using black and orange. Right? Yeah, because brown is essentially dark orange. So you can, you can, I mean, you can get multiple colors multiple ways. There's not just one way to do it. And then I'm just kind of going through, playing with color, 
Now, um, you can make, I mean, if you want your leaf to be more on the um, like red, orange side, then you wouldn't be using as much green, right? Because it's just like in different phases of turning. So, oh, I, I mixed too much of my... Childproof caps. Childproof caps. <laughs> There we go. Okay, if I need to, I'm getting really close to that edge there. And then maybe a little water drop. Okay, and then next, next chunk, next section. And we're not worried about that white spot between the two. Uh, no, I'm sections. actually I'm gonna leave that that white spot. I'll blend it a little bit later, but I think this also acts as a nice um, vein for the leaves too. If you don't want to do like a dark vein on the leaves, you can leave it as a like a white or a light, and it will come across the same. Nice. But if it's bothering you, you can just go in and start to kind of fill it up. Just do, just do what you want to do, essentially. Okay, now next section. I'm gonna rinse my brush and just use water. And remember the, the leaves are gonna kinda go in. Then I like mine to have a nice fine tip, so I'm getting that sharp at the top there. And we don't care about all that color there. That's good. We don't care. I mean, though, it's gonna. If you touch your water next to what you just put down, that like right now I'm gonna touch the red in there. It's gonna bleed out. I just embrace that. That looks cool. I let that be part of the painting. You let things go. Just don't, you can't get mad at watercolor for doing its thing. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's what you're made to do is to spread like that. So I'm not mad about it. Okay. That was deep. Thanks. Drop in some green. Now I want my leaf to start turning more towards the like orange red side. So I'm going to focus more on those colors. Yellows. You see how this is kind of like just staying there, right? This isn't like moving across my paper a lot, across the water. Um, you can help it. If it's not moving, you can be like, come on, little fella. Just, just kind of, you know, kind of blend it and spread it. Hey there, little buddy. Hey there, little buddy. Come on. Don't you want to spread out a little bit? Okay, now I want to do some salt. So take your salt. There's a bunch of different types of salt. I'm just using regular table salt. You all are going to get different effects if the grains are bigger or smaller. On here, I just used regular table salt, so that's what I'm going to use right now. But you're just going to like sprinkle it in wherever you want some textures to be. And this needs to be wet, right? It needs yeah. to be wet for this to happen. And you can see I put it in, and it immediately is not turning into these like dots, right? It's not going to look like it's going to do anything for a bit. You got to let it dry. Let it dry, and then you're going to see some textural results. And we'll, what will bigger grains of salt do? Uh, I think it would just make the sizes a little bit different in terms of these little things. Like the little, I don't know what we should call them, like explosions. Because I've got a pink Himalayan rock salt. Oh, I don't know. I, and I'm sure there's like people who have really researched this, the different types of salt and what exactly they do. I'm not that person. I'm very sorry. But um, you can play with it yourself. You know what I mean? Okay. Now moving on to my next section on my leaf. 
and I'm gonna do my little draw it out with water, do my ocean waves thing, go back down in and then ocean waves again, and then fill it in. And then I'm gonna start move towards some of the browner colors, dark orange, some red. Would you call that a burnt sienna? Burnt? More red in it. Yeah, a burnt sienna has a little bit more red in it, but good color, good job. I know eight colors and burnt sienna is one of them. Why, why do you know that color? Crayola. Oh, okay. When you drop in color, is it um, just straight from the bottle or have you mixed that with water at all? Uh, it's just straight from my pile. So since there's water on my paper, um, I don't really need to mix it, but it also just depends on like how saturated you want it to be, right? So if you want like a really light color to be dropped in and you don't want a super dark red, you kind of want like, you know, a pinkish or something, then I would That's mix cool. it with water before I dropped it in. Pro tip, that's what I do. I'm gonna do some water textures, work on this side. And then I also try and like, because we're doing this section by section, it's really easy to think of these as individual sections, but you also have to keep in mind that this leaf is uh, its whole thing, right? So if I have yellow coming off on this side of the vein, I probably have yellow a little bit on the other side. You know what I'm saying? So I'll be like, here's a little bit of yellow. You see how like there's green on this side and then green on this side? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm watching <laughs> So just keep that in mind. It doesn't have to be perfect where they match totally, but don't be afraid to cross those sections and let those colors kind of like um, go across those lines, you know? Water knows no boundaries. <laughs> I never knew you were so good. I'm just really philosophical. I almost messed that word up. I'm gonna put a little bit of green just on the tip. Okay, now you can start, you can see some of that salt drying. Can you see some of that close up? Yeah, they look like little dark spots. <laughs> yep, yep, pretty much. Okay, and I'll do a little more salt on this side. Now, if it's too wet, like puddly wet, and if your colors, if your wash is too light, like your color is really, really light, then you're not gonna see that salt effect as much as if you were putting it in a super saturated area. Okay, next section. We're almost done with our first leaf. It turned out huge, but that's okay. It's a healthy tree. It's a nice, healthy leaf, you know? Oh dear. Oh dear, I just dropped water. I'm just gonna pick it up. Okay. Well, it's like it never happened. It's like it never happened. I need some of those paper towels in my life. <laughs> I'm gonna fill it in with water. Is a little color getting in there? Yes. Am I mad about it? No. 
It's color. It's, I like color. It's fine. Okay. Now you keep on, keep on, keep on, keep it on, you know, drop in that color. Oh, that's bold. It is. Bad bold? No. Good bold. Good bold. Good. Like some fire Taco Bell sauce. <laughs> I love fire Taco Bell sauce. Yeah, it's the best. It's the best sauce that they have, I feel. Yeah, I agree. And also, like, I mean, if you look at leaves, there's it's complicated color. They do have little hints of other colors within the section of color. It's crazy. It's like a fall leaf changing. There's so much going on. So don't be afraid to play. Just try not to uh, work these things back and forth because you do want some like, I mean, for me personally, because I like vibrant color. If you don't like vibrant color, maybe do work it all back and forth and it will turn kind of muddy and that's okay. Lots of fall leaves are really brown. Lots of fall, I mean, all leaves are brown in the end. Right? <laughs> They're all just dust in the wind. <laughs> Brock, if you could sing that for us, please, that would be just great. One show per day. One show per day. What have you done for us today? Whoa, all of my excellent no. questions. <laughs> okay, true. Touche. Touche. Putting in some dark brown. I feel like I, I don't have as much vibrant color on this, so I want to do like another... Let's do some more red. I like the juxtaposition of bright on the right. And Brock, have you been Googling art terms? Juxtaposition isn't an art term. Yes, it is. It's definitely uh, just a term. <laughs> okay. Use it in all sorts of things. Okay, you're right. Okay. It is an art term though. But also yes. But, <laughs> but also, yes, I have. Certainly have been. <laughs> is that contrast you have there? Wow. <laughs> Well, you're, you're doing great. Love it. Okay. I feel pretty good about that section. Let's move on to the next section. Maybe this side will be more like this, this side of our leaf is dying more than the other parts, you know? So we'll do browner over here. And if you can do one or two ocean waves, you can do three, you can do whatever you want because there are so many leaves with so many different things. I think for the most part, I stuck with like one main one and then it hit the tip, but this one I did two. So, you know, live on the edge, you know, take a chance. <laughs> I got it in there, you guys. I said it, I said it so naturally too. At all. <laughs> okay. Now. My, like my orange. <laughs> my orange ran into my yellow. I just put too much color down, so it's running everywhere on my palette. Okay, browns, right? Because the side is like dying. Okay, you can, I'm gonna do some water drops in there. And then, um, more color. Bringing it back from the dead. Bringing it, bringing it, it's like, I'm like, no, don't die yet. Let me help you. Okay, so here's my leaf. And here's another thing that I like to do is, um, like when I'm done painting it, I like to take my round two and then I just kind of like go through it and just sharpen up some of the edges, um, some of these points. So um, I'm just gonna kind of like go around and with my finer brush because it's easier for me to get a point on this and do like a nice sharp color or a point.
because I think it's just like taking the time to just do these little fine, like more delicate details that it just kind of elevates your artwork a little bit. Now this one I ran too close to the edge of my paper, so bummer, but that's all right. Sharpen this guy up. And then I just put in like a really strong orange on that edge. And just so it doesn't feel like I have like a dark outline, I'm just gonna kind of like blend this out a little bit. So that color kind of goes in there a little bit better. I'm quiet during this part because I'm focusing. Quiet on the set. Quiet, quiet, please. It's like in golf, right? Look at this. Look at this gorgeous leaf. I'm going to smooth this out. Now I'm just using water for this point, part and then I'll drop in some color. I think my next leaf I'm gonna have to make like so tiny. <laughs> a baby leaf. A baby. I'm gonna do a, a mama, a daddy, and a baby. I like that it's a dad working hard to spend time with his baby. You know what? I thought about that and then I'm like, you know what? Equality, right? Yeah, dad leaves are good dads too. Exactly. I don't know what happened over here. I'm not sure if this is an ocean wave or like a funky line. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna exaggerate this to make it more obvious that it's an ocean wave. And I still have quite a bit of paint puddled up right here. So I'm just gonna move that. I'm gonna hurt it. What's another, what's a better word for that Brock? Uh, I didn't Google this term. <laughs> I want to like always say like sheep dog it, you know, because that's what sheep sheep dogs do. I'm like, that's not very helpful. If it works for you, it's great. Oh, that point got way pointy. Okay. Okay. Uh, do I want to add salt? No. I don't, not over there. Great, so this is like almost done with our first leaf, but we have to wait for it to totally dry before we can do the actual veins. If I go in there right now with like a dark brown and I try and put dark brown in there, it's gonna bleed everywhere because this is still pretty wet. So when you go back and you do these little vein lines, which you don't even have to do if you don't want them, um, but you would want to wait until it's dry. And you can see here on this one, I did not wait. Can they see from that angle over there? Uh, they're looking top down. Okay. Um, it's kind of fuzzy. Can they tell that it's fuzzy? That is fuzzy? Uh, fuzzy-ish. <laughs> okay, trust me when I say that the veins on this are more fuzzy, and then these ones are nice and sharp. So if you want those sharp lines, then do that. Wait till it dries is what it is. Okay. Now I'm going to do my other leaf and I'm actually going to flip this around and then work this way. Wow, I made this leaf huge, huge. Okay, now I'm gonna start painting leaf number two. Here's the thing, I lifted up my paper and it was still wet and it dripped here. Um, for, I don't know if you can see it, but thank you for pointing <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see this, that just happened. But uh, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna leaf it. That was Brock's joke that I just took, um, because uh, as an example, this shows you don't lift up your paper while it's still wet, because this is what will happen. And two, accidents like this happen all the time with watercolor. It's part of it, and you just learn not to get mad about it, and then you just like go with those changes. So with this new leaf, I'll probably paint it, and then I'll probably do a couple drips on purpose so it makes sense with this one. And that's it, you just kind of go with the flow, you know? It's not a big deal. So let's put in, this still is not dry enough to do my stems for step three, so we're just gonna wait till that's dry. So I'm just gonna keep on painting because, you know, we're not gonna sit around and do nothing, you know what I'm saying? So I'm getting my brown for my stem. And then I always like doing my stems first because it just gives you an idea of where things are gonna go. So, and it kind of like creates the base. So what I'm gonna do is I'm probably gonna have my stem come up this way. So it's gonna have like a little curve and then I'll probably have my a leaf come this way over here. Cause this leaf got uh, pretty big. So I have to like adjust um, to that. I don't have enough room to do one like this next to it. And that's not a big deal. You just kind of, you go with the flow. So I'm just going to do my stem like that. Make sure your stem is thick at the bottom. And then I'm gonna do my main stem coming up this way. And then five stems from there. I'm gonna run into this one if I do it down this way, so I'm gonna keep it high. And I'm not gonna stress about that because leaves are all different shapes and sizes and it is okay. This is gonna be a baby one compared to that one. Okay, so that was step one. Step two, we're gonna put our water down. And also, if you can, you don't like, you want your side stems to be similar in length to your middle stem. So this one is pretty short compared to that one. I'm just gonna lengthen it just a bit. Cause it doesn't have to be the exact same size, but we want it to be similar in size. Okay. Now I'm gonna add my water. Oh, it's so much easier to do this on a tiny scale. It's so little, so little room. I'm like, this is gonna be so quick. Look at all this that I'm filling in. And I'm gonna have this one stay more in like the yellow, green, um, brown with touches of orange uh, stage of a leaf changing, you know? So just drop in that color and then move on to the next part. Oh, still a little too much green on my brush. And you're gonna fill that in. And we are cruising. We are going. Look how easy it is to fill stuff in on this tiny little leaf. I saw on our Let's Make Art Together Facebook group, uh, someone was painting on, I think, two by three cards so they could put them by their desk and they wouldn't take up a lot of space. And they were the cutest little things. Oh, were they doing the full projects on those cards? Yeah, there's a spooky cat and also a bee. That is so awesome. Tiny little cards on tiny little easels. On it's, I love tiny little paintings. Now, painting tiny is actually harder if you're trying to get detail done, but they're so cute. When you said this leaf was gonna be more like the brownish orange, did you mean to say green? Did I say brownish orange? I thought I said yellowish, greenish, brownish. Uh, maybe you did, all the colors. With touches of orange. I had a very different leaf in my mind, that's all. No, it's I'm just gonna leave you alone. <laughs> Thanks. If you could just let me work, that would be great. <laughs> I'm just kidding. So I'm just take a walk.
Okay. I'm just doing like little hints of orange on the edges. And a little bit of brown. And you can always like stop and add and take away color later. So I'm gonna add a little bit of green on this side since it's over here. That works because it's already pretty wet still. It's still, it's still pretty, pretty wet, yeah. And if you want to do it on top and it's dry, just re-wet it. I feel like I need to have like, I don't know, something else going on over here. Oh, well, that's salt. You gonna salt it? I'm gonna salt it. Because I, I, I still want to keep it in this color palette, but I wanted, you know, something else going on besides just like straight yellow. Good move. I Thanks. You. Thank you. But after you've added salt, it's, you can't really add water or color after that. Right? You, you can. It's just like kind of unpredictable how, what the results will be. Mm, interesting. Seems like that's a move someone who likes to live on the edge would do. You're right. You're right, Brock. You are 100% right. So, you know, just give me a second. <laughs> Listen, that wasn't a challenge. I was just saying. <laughs> I mean, it sounded kind of like a challenge, and I will take it. Ooh, let's just see what that does. This is experimental watercoloring. Experimental. This is this is us going off the grid, you guys. Off script. Off script. Maybe that's a better word. <laughs> We're not so good with words. We're, We're not. Like listen, I'm not great with words. I'm not great with shapes. I'm. I can paint though. Color though. Color. Most of the time. Sometimes though, I you know lift up my paper even though I've been working with watercolor for years, I just forget that it moves. It's fine. Gravity. It's fine. Gravity. Darn you. Who turned that back on? <laughs> We're going to put some brown in here. Sounds like Someone's coming out up the steps. And here, like I didn't rinse my brush in between grabbing from the green to the yellow. So now I have this light green, like a lime green. That's not bad. But if you want that like nice vibrant yellow, you gotta make sure you use a clean brush when grabbing it. Look at this cute little baby leaf. I think I like him better. I think the dad leaf is uh, very regal. Good, good word, good word. Thank you. Okay. Do I want salt over there? No, let's do it. Let's do Let's introduce some more brown here, you know? Just a little. Ooh, that's a good brown. Dark. That one's more of a burnt umber, I would say. Uh, what is an umber? I don't know, but that is a paint color. But when they're burnt, <laughs> when you burn an umber, that's what it looks like. That is it. Umber. U-M-B-E-R. Look it up because I don't know what it is. Okay. But 
I bet somebody's going to tell me. Okay, and I'm going to work around the leaf that's here. And because these are so tiny, I feel comfortable doing a couple sections at a time. This reminds me of a frog. Is that weird? Not the shape of it, but like the coloring. Oh, frogs are green. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Yeah. yeah. Frogs are green. <laughs> There's like the tiniest bit of green on that leaf. <laughs> I'm trying to be <laughs> You're doing a great job. You're doing great. I'm going to drop in some water. I feel like it needs a little bit of warmth. Put some orange over here. Now I would say at this point, if you're looking at mine, this is too wet for me because it's, it's starting to puddle and then my paper is starting to bend that it's like moving the water down to one area. So whenever that happens, I just take my paper towel and I just soak up the water. because when it gets like that, then it's not gonna really respond to the colors that you're putting into it. Um, it's not gonna move like you want it to. And it's not a huge deal. You just pick it up with paper towel and then you just keep on going. Oh, looks like they're holding hands. Aw. I gotta make this one drip. You know how to do that? Should I have it drip the same way or the opposite way? Ooh, questions. Let's take a look here, actually. I feel opposite. Do you concur or no? It's your painting. It is my painting. You're right. So if you want to make it drip, you just are going to want to get, make sure there's a lot of water. So I'm just going to like on like this corner here maybe here. You just kind of like help it by like creating a, starting a path for it. I don't feel like you and then, all this prep work for the last strip. Well, because it was already like that. And then I, you just put your paper up like that. That is artistic. Yes, it is. Um, if you don't have drips on your painting and you don't want them, then don't do that. But I'm just, I'm just trying to show you to go with the flow. Because <laughs> they're paint drips. Do you get it? Uh, <laughs> okay. I'm going to do a little bit more salt work. There. We're just going to kind of see what happens. And I want it, I really like this like deep green I got on that first one. So I'm going to do a couple more drops of just green. I did already put salt in though. We're going to see what that does. Yes. That's such a good, I'm really glad I'm doing this. Me too. I'm it definitely glad. needed that dark green. Kind of reminds me of a frog. <laughs> Frogs are green. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel good. Now I would, I would go a little bit more on the drips to like play with that a little bit more since it's now part of my painting, but that is not part of the original project. So if you, if you do have drips and you want to do more on that, you can, I'm not going to, because I'm like focus that that wasn't the plan. Okay. Now my big leaf is dry enough where I can do my stem. So I'm going to take my two. This is step three, you guys. We've been on step two for a very long time, but now we're done with it. I'm taking some brown. You can mix brown multiple ways. Mix all the colors you have, or mix red and green, or mix black and orange. All will give you brown. Or do all of those things. You know what? It doesn't matter how you get brown. 
just just have some on your brush. And then um, I'm just gonna kind of go through and go over the veins that I originally painted. And then I'm gonna just do a couple pointing out from the main vein towards that like ocean wave that we, that we made. So it's like, huh. Maybe make that sound. Who, oh. Who. And I've just turned my paper as I go. It's easier for me to work out. And um, you can, there's a lot more veins on a leaf. If you look at them closely, there's a lot going on there. Um, I don't want it to be too distracting from the gorgeous color that we already laid down though. So I'm just doing hints. I'm just doing like a little vein here, a little vein there, because I don't want that to become the main focus of the painting. And remember to get nice thin lines. You're just gonna use your liner too and barely touch your paintbrush to the painting. And then you kind of like lift up and wisp away as you go. So I'm gonna do another one. Are we gonna leave white space or are you gonna? I'll probably go back in and fill this main white space, but the white space and the main part of the leaves, I'm just going to, to leave. Okay. Um, Cause I think it's kind of cool. If you don't like it, then you can just go back over it in some color. I think it's great. Okay, so I got my veins and then we'll probably do some red there. So that's what's already there. Just a little bit of color. Just like that. Okay, and this one is too wet for me to do my, to do my veins, but I'm gonna just show you, I'm gonna do it anyway, just to show you what it looks like. Because sometimes that fuzzy texture is cool and you do that on purpose um, just to get kind of a fuzzy line. If you have a lot of salt in an area and you try and paint over it, it might not like take it because there's just a lot going on. I'm gonna be careful twisting mine because it's still pretty wet over here. Okay. I think that that's it. You guys, we did it. We did all of our fall leaves. Um, all of these are gonna look so different from each other, which is going to be awesome. So please post it and please share it. I can't wait to see the different combinations you guys come up with, the salt textures you're gonna get. And you can see now that my big papa leaf is dried, I have some great textures here from the salt. Can you get a close up of that? Yeah, we are gonna go close up right now. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, look at those, super cool. And then those still have to dry, but they're starting to show up a little bit on the other side. So have fun with that salt, have fun with those textures. Um, just remember with this one, it's just about kind of playing with it, playing with those wet on wet, on wet techniques of dropping in color, dropping in water. Um, if you do paint this, share it. You can tag us in it. Our Instagram name is Let's Go Make Art. We have a Facebook group where you can post your work. You do have to request to be part of it, and that's just so we can like, like let's say somebody goes crazy and starts posting a bunch of stuff that like we don't want them to post, we can then like stop them. So that's why you have to request it. So we have that power. But anyways, we let everybody in. And so far it's been really great. And people are kind and you can just share your work and be part of this watercolor community. Um, I feel like I was gonna say something else. Oh, if you are a beginner, then you might want to watch the live paint along version. In the live version, I usually do a couple warm ups. We go over the techniques a little bit. So if you're brand new to watercolor, that is a great place to start um, because I take a little bit more time going over how to do everything. So 
Uh, that is going to be live Tuesday night at 7.15 Central Standard Time. If you want to get this kit, you can just get it off our website for 15 bucks at letsmakeart.com. And if you paint this, share it because I want to see it. That's it. Oh, next week, the next project. Let me get it. Sorry. Okay, next week, our fox. It's here! That is a fancy fox. It, it's our feeling foxy project. Did you like the title of that project? I, I thought it was clever. Anyways, <laughs> uh, tune in for that. That will be released the week after we release this. <laughs> I think that's all I have to say. Bye.